I must say this is disturbing. This bolt underneath here was already loose. Just totally free. I guess uh, with that situation being broken up, uh, with that piece being broken, everything was just going to break loose. So, thank goodness I'm replacing this. I mean, still had two other bolts that are hopefully fully attached. Car problems got your head in the sand? triumphant. You have a champion to help you. Huzzah! Welcome to the D.E. Nichols channel. Autobotom.com <laughs> Okay. I get what it does now. The, uh, this guy actually is bracketed up here and it's a good thing it's getting replaced too because if you notice over here it's almost out of metal where that hooks in. This still has weight from the engine on it even though it's not connected in at all. So yeah, this does serve a purpose. Without it, there it's actually a one bolt connection so that all the forces go into the inside rubber of this. And thankfully this bolt was tight in this one, so it was just one that was loose and loose before I started. So that's not as bad as it could have been. So one more bolt. I've already broken it free. Or a nut down here in the back. There you go. Yeah, down here in the back. And that should be free. And I think i got to take this big old bolt that you see in the back. That's a 17. That's not going to happen tonight because my toolboxes are in the back of my truck to go to work and I didn't think I'd need my serpentine tool. It's either that or my other option is to raise up the engine some. Well I've got that jack under it anyway so I can get clearance to have a socket there and pull her up. As you can see there's still a lot of oil over here from when that timing chain tensioner uh, o-ring was linking. But when I get everything put back together, it'll look clean. This arrow is supposed to point at uh, this arrow right here. That's supposed to point at where this is supposed to be, but it's broken over to the side like that. That's useless. I'm not sure what this is or what it means. Whoa! Disturbing the crime scene. But, you look. I think it got rained on in there. Well, that's something I'll have to clean up. <laughs> I'm just curious if it dries or not, or if like this is a hydraulic one and it broke. I don't know. But the new one, it's unreal how different it is with how yeah, the new one's all straight and strong. So I had another broken motor mount. What was keeping this engine in? <laughs> oh man. I mean I, I have customers that let it let them go longer, but yeah, this'll this'll be good for the car. Okay. The last one, I'm gonna point at it with lining it up. Last nut for the timing chain cover that I can find so far is right there and it's the really long bolt. Uh, this one up here where it fits in there was a shorter bolt. And all these little bolts they went around on the edges of where this guy sat. See I already have the new one in place. And also what held this on and these big thick ones go underneath the motor mount. This one goes on top. These go on the side. You stub you. Well, this one is special. It went right here. It's actually a 12. Well, these are 14. And the little guys are 10s. And yeah, this is another big one. 
That doesn't look like a 14. That's weird. Yeah, it's a 14. I didn't use any of this at all, but I've got that out and ready. In case my uh, truck bed needed a little more tightening. Since I just was in there for a fuel pump. But yeah, uh, that should complete the video log. So I know where these things go back well enough. So I don't, I'm not tortured later. This is still fully in place and in the way for that to clear. And uh, the belt's loose because I loosened the tensioner up top. That's really weird. The belt's loose just because I did that. And as always, before I take a belt off, I take a video of it. Because a video, you can slide it around and kind of catch all the angles. So that far one comes up around the middle one, and then that goes around the uh, crankshaft pulley, and it comes around, to the, around the AC, and it hooks backwards around that guy, whatever he does, in the center. That might be a water pump, I'm not sure. People recommend doing a water pump at the same time, but water pump's on the outside of the engine, so I'm not sure why I'd be worried about that, other than most of the work to get down here. Okay, right in the center of that goo, I see another bolt. No, that's next to the timing chain. That grounding wire is almost pointing at it. The timing chain covers just off the side. Ooh, it's going to be really gooey in there. And I bet down there at the bottom is a crankshaft sensor, totally covered in goo. Let's see if it's got rubber getting eaten alive. Wow. That oil, not knowing that oil leak was coming from it, a big mess. There's a DIY form that I'll link to that has been helpful to me in this process. I need to look at it again because I can't remember where a couple of those bolts were. Right. Taking a look in here, do you see those lines? Yeah, you can see those. Just great. The timing chain guides have nice lines in them. I don't know if they are like that new, but if they don't have lines like that in them new, I'll probably replace those while I'm in there. Timing chain, I I just, the thing is perfect. It is absolutely gorgeous. I have no fears or concerns or worries about that. But here's a quick high def shot since I was accidentally shooting in a lower res earlier. Yes, no valves dropped. We got to see if the other side of them got damaged though when that uh, piston popped through. I've been smelling gas the whole time, but thankfully it's down from a spray with how long the car's been off because I finally dropped a fuel injector. <laughs> Oh well. I just don't want anything to get in it, so I'll kind of put it back in its hole until it's all ready to come out. Don't break things. Uh, I had some exciting things to share. I certainly could use my serpentine tool to do the job, but I'm kind of excited about this purchase, except for how much it cost me. <laughs> it's like $400 for the... Uh, Matco. It's supposed to be better than their lower end one. It's got 90 teeth instead of 72. And hearing three, four clicks instead of one or two is in effect what it feels like. I mean, they all say four degree swing or five or six degree swing, but have you noticed you have to swing it a lot more degrees than that to get it to click? This one, once I started breaking in the first one, as you can tell, it's got some scratches already on it, number 15. That these are the extra long ones. I couldn't do it without it. Uh, this, I've my buddy at work picked up a few of these uh, sockets designed like that, and they do work on more rounded off bolts. Probably not 50% rounded off like they can claim, but it does really help. It says that this type can remove this many kinds of fasteners. That's incredible. Anyway, my serpentine bolt, bolt tool has a lot of clicks in it, but it, it's like most sockets. It feels like it's always getting stuck and not actually doing the clicks by the space it could. 
and uh, these are feeling really good. And maybe I can finish taking out this cylinder head a little easier with it. Not that, that this is why I've avoided coming back to it for so long. It's just all I have left is to pull two bolts on the hydraulic pulley. And I believe that'll be it. Problem is less that and more of this e torque to get the hydraulic tensioner off. We'll see. We got one big bolt down there, I believe it's 17. Oh, so much easier with the right tool. Holy cow. Seriously. While I'm in here, I'll pause real quick on removing this last bolt to get this serpentine tensioner out. Get my unpaid tool view off to the side, trust me, unpaid, $400. And let's take a look. This is what I spotted the other day. That is the side of my block being punched out, so the bottom is definitely gone. And I've got a good bead on some used ones to rebuild. Uh, buying half an engine at a time is way cheaper. Uh, like a thousand dollars cheaper so if I was more experienced I would have known to look around and spot that but I gotta know if the top's bad too before I make my choice well anyway that cylinder number two misfire that's what got bent from the water and definitive no doubt about it sorry if you think otherwise but I didn't film it so no one else saw this but Every time I've done a fuel injector and it's leaked, it's ran crazy amounts of fuel through here. These leak, okay? If this area right here pools up, it goes straight into the engine. I about, about destroyed my engine just from fuel injectors over the years where I've had to do reseal jobs after a replacement over and over again until I got a little better at it. So anyways, the water pooled here. That's how it sucked into the engine. That's how this engine got destroyed. My pod filter was completely dry. It's not what destroyed it. Water coming through here is what finished it off. And without a destroyed spark plug, I'm hoping with cylinder number two not going up and down anymore, that we will have a saved top of an engine because everything I've looked at so far is actually in really good shape. Okay. This is pretty helpful. Uh, once you're done with your extra long ratcheting, going after it the easy way on the one side, eventually you're going to have to come to the other side of this AC line to keep going. Apparently I'm not at that point though. And confirmed this is a 17. Oh gosh, that sucks. It's hard to do. Okay, a couple forgotten bolts. Like this, uh, fuel line. Found another uh, something holding it down. Well, not really holding it down so much as uh, just being in the way. But I've got another grounding wire over here. And then I've got something over here. I don't really know what it is. It's another electrical item. And that's got to go to. Probably is getting ground for the PCM for something. It's only got one wire on it. Initially, I couldn't make myself do this with my new set. I already scratched the heck out of my first one for the tight space it was in, but that is what ratcheting box handles are for. 
Does it get scratched up in tight spaces? So this is a shorter year, 10 than the 10 that was over here. But that still doesn't answer the true question. In this uh, wiring harness has memory. It keeps putting itself back in the way over and over again. So that's free. I guess while I'm at it, I might as well remove this one as well. The other fancy thing about this tool is it kind of looks broken up on the edge. Snap on and Mac has it, or Mac Mac has it too, but it's like serrations on there, and it doesn't mess up your bolts. What its goal is is to make it easier to uh, grab. I've already found it to be very helpful and I just barely got the set yesterday. Maybe my neighbor's right. Maybe I should just buy a really old car and restore it instead. <laughs> wow, that's work. Super short, stubby M6 by one. I've got a shop that will foil for uh, seventy dollars. Entirely clean my cylinder head, get it absolutely beautiful, and pressure test it. Granted, if it needs any more work than that, you know that's kind of like an oil change at other shops. It's to get you started, to get you into the door. They would like you to do more. Well, there goes 10% of my thousand dollars of savings. Trying to figure out what was holding the cylinder head down. Trying to stay away from any mating surfaces. And I just broke my valve, oil valve control for the uh, BVTI. I mean, these are, this isn't separated from the lower block, it's only separated from the upper block, but it just does not want to move. I mean, obviously, it's lost its seal. There's a pool of coolant over here. I mean, the sucker's not connected to anything anymore. There's nothing to pry against. Should be pride against anyway. <sighs> My only options are bad options. Maybe instead of getting out there to work on something like a car, you should plant something. Be sure to like and subscribe. I'll see you next time.